Thank you. And with that, we'll go to discussion. I think uh, I actually did have a question for you there, Tristan. Um, in these in these these condensed phases, can you tell um, how thick those surface coatings are? Or is it something that is only coated on the surface of the mineral grains, or is it something that's maybe co uh, uh, precipitating with the mineral phases? Um, so in terms of the experiments, mm -hmm. the mineral phases that we are seeing are being condensed out of the gas. So they are as thick as those mineral phases are. Um, in terms of the lunar regolith, the actual lunar regolith, no, we don't know that because we don't haven't worked with it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Wait, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I have what I think might be a related question, which is that I, I think that I'm missing the point of why you evaporate and then recondense and then measure these toxic components. You know, why, why, is, why are the toxic components not simply, or maybe not so simply, measured from the original material that you're assessing? That's a good question, partly because we don't understand what the original material really looks like. So we're doing experiments to try and find out what sort of things are going to be originally deposited on the lunar glass beads. And then what does um, mm. hydrogen implantation and reduction from that hydrogen do to those mineral phases? So, so, the, so the, the precipitation of these materials onto your uh, tubes, onto your test tubes, is meant to replicate what's happening on the surface of the bead. Yes. Is that, I, I got it. I think I understand. Yes. A lot better. Yeah. In, in terms of what we're actually sending over to health science, it's not it. going to be those minerals that we precipitated. We right. buy them off the shelf. <laughs> right. No, no, I understand now. Yeah, I got now. to. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense now. <laughs> uh, and Sorry? while I have the microphone, if you'll indulge me with another question, I had another question about the DEM which is that I, I apologize because this is, <laughs> this is coming from a place of ignorance about how DEM is calibrated. But I really, I, I liked, I, you know, from an experimentalist point of view, I, was, I thought that the, the side by side movie of the, uh, the material coming out of the funnel and the DEM simulation of that was very compelling. Of course, in the, in the version you showed, they didn't match. But my question is, uh, do you measure, so ultimately you, you have a couple of knobs, I think it was two knobs that you described to adjust the material property. And then do you match the sort of dynamic falling or do you just match sort of the final state of this dirt pile at a particular angle? That's a great question. Um, right now we're just going to be looking at the final angle of repose. So at the end, um, However, we can and will eventually be moving on to studying particle dynamics. Um, it'll have to get into particle tracking on the experimental side, and that's computationally intensive, and we're just trying to get the model running right now. Right. Um, but no, definitely, there are people looking at these uh, flow dynamics, and that is, that is on the docket for us. Okay, and I guess part of what prompted the question is that it seemed like there were two knobs, but one... Uh, matching parameter, so it seemed like it was there was a there was some freedom there. It was a, a sort of an under constrained problem. We'll have to discuss yeah. this more okay. offline. Okay. It's yeah. a lot long long conversation. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, again, any any virtual attendees who have any questions, we are monitoring the chat. Feel free to type in there. I actually had a, a question for Jamie, if you're still online. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, maybe more of a technical question, but how did you do the uh, the cellular exposure? Was it under vacuum or was it just in the lab atmosphere? Um, it's just the lab atmosphere, but as I um, described in, the, in, in pre pretty early, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to run really fast like for such a short talk. So we usually store those um, dust particles inside a vacuum desiccator that's actually in Tristan's lab. And uh, only before the experiment, we will 
take it out and we'll grind it as soon as we can and then we'll put it to the cells. Okay. So there will be like one hour, two hour kind of um, timing that's not exactly vacuum, but but um, I think in Tristan's um, research and some she, he did some testing and that doesn't affect the characteristic of the dust stimulant that much. So I believe and, and you can also show it, you can also see in my data that the, um, the reduced samples are still showing a higher, much higher toxicity than the um, non-reduced samples. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sorry. I, I yeah, yeah. So your surface activation was, was the grinding. I, it wasn't clear to me if you were doing the grinding and then storage, or, but you're doing the storage and then grinding and then exposure right afterwards. Yeah, so... Um, so Tristan would do the size occlusion and they, he will grind it at that time. But just in short, uh, as you said, the surface is activated. I also grind like for one to two minutes just to um, kind of make sure it's, it's, it's as active as possible. Just we're trying our best to make sure the characteristic is preserved for the cells to react. Yep, got it. Thank you. Uh, so we do have another question here in the group. Yeah, I also have a question for you, Jamie, while you're, while you're already up. Um, I was wondering in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, the reference scale that you use, like grams per centimeter squared coverage area, I don't have a good sense for, is that a, a huge amount of dust exposure? I guess, could you benchmark for us in terms of like, that's what you expect out of cumulative, uh, you know, a full mission exposure? Or is that like every time the astronauts come in and out of the, out of, uh the atmosphere sort of uh you know these are sort of yeah. alarming numbers of of cell death yeah sure that, that's a great question so actually um in our previous pub previously published paper we're using like double the amount of these dust but that's actually like like way more dust part of way more amount of dust that's actually exposed to astronauts. So um, now we're trying to focusing on lowering the lunar dust stimulant and make the treatment time longer as a, a previous virtual question has been asked. So um, there was a lot more study in like terrestrial dust, like, I don't know, like some heavy metals or some air pollution studies that have been showing that in a lower, like the lower concentration of our particles with a longer exposure time could could also have um, have effect on cells, but um, there's no like such research of exposure for lunar dust stimulants. So um, what we're working on is to try to um, keep it lower so that it'll like better simulate what's what's the, the actual exposure amount that the astronaut may be facing. And yeah, so so that's the goal we're doing. But yeah, you're you're, you're right. This is um, a lot more than um, the astronaut has really been like being exposed to just for research because we need to know if it'll cause any effect first and then we'll go lower and lower and lower to see um, what's the um, what what you, what's the alarming um, concentration of the lunar dust um, that the astronaut may face and may have some chronic um, effect chronic diseases that will happen to astronauts Thank you. Okay. okay, and we have a question in the chat for Tristan. Um, how hot is the hydrogen furnace? Um, we usually bring it up to 900 degrees Celsius. Jason, did you have a follow-up question on that by chance? <laughs> 900. 900 Celsius. <laughs> Why 900 Celsius? <laughs> Great question. Um, so we are trying to bring it up to a temperature where we get some amount of partial melting to simulate a glutinate material. Uh, we actually don't see a whole lot of evidence of partial melting even at 900. Um, and these are roughly basaltic compositions. So it's quite interesting that there isn't a lot. Um, but we do see, of course, a lot of reduction of the materials on there. OK, thank you. Yeah, a couple minutes left for questions. One longer question, maybe two short. 
Anyone? Monitoring the chat. I can start counting down. <laughs> and if not, uh, I think we're good to adjourn for break, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs>